Today, we're going to be watching See Me Craft's video on Is It Possible to Beat Kirby Squeak Squad Without Jumping? The reason I do this one is because I actually made a video myself on a similar subject. Except that it was a part one and I never made part two because there wasn't enough interesting parts. Uh, you can go watch that video. I'll link it in the description. I'll also link the, in the description a link to See Me Craft's video if I remember to. I might not remember to. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, um, also another thing is that, um, I'm wondering if he'll find more ways to save jumps or if I found more, um, like, I wonder if I have less jumps than his video or if his video has, uh, less jumps than mine also. So, um, that's a thing too. Alright, and let's get right into it. I accidentally saw one second of it. Man, these Kirby No Jump videos have been a real blast to make recently. The last two games we've attempted have turned out to be my, as of right now, two favorite Kirby games. Who knows, maybe we'll discover a new favorite today, as we look into the following. Is it possible to beat Kirby Squeak Squad without jumping? I, I, uh, already, um, already, the, um, intro sounds pretty cool. Uh, Kirby Squeak Squad was actually my first Kirby game. Oh yeah, I know that strat. Oh yeah! <laughs> I remember these. Oh yeah, this room. I remember that being, um, interesting. Our rules today are as straightforward as ever. We are looking to reach the end of Kirby Squeak Squad without jumping or hovering. To avoid utilizing those moves, we'll be repurposing the attacks from our copy abilities as jump replacements. Before we can do that though, we of course need to acquire a copy ability. So, let's see how that goes. Oop. Prison Planes 1 nearly immediately throws this little hill. Prison Planes 1. I don't know if that was intentional, but in terms of if you try to beat it without jumping and just can't jump at all and just don't give in, then uh, it is prison. In our way. Unfortunately, in this Kirby game, we don't have any multiplayer or dodge rolls to get us out of such a jam. That leaves us with no choice here but to jump. Same applies with getting over this square of land. There is more to this jump, though. You want to make sure you land on the right side of this Waddle Dee when you do it. Yes, so you can slide kick off the Waddle Dee and go one block higher, like I did. That way you can slide into him to get the bit of height you need to clear the next stop skull without jump. Yes! Unfortunately, after that, we're right back to resigning ourselves to jumping to get up this next cliff. But that jumps. finally brings us to our first copy ability, Beam. Ah, oh, yes, music. Which has no moves we could use in the stead of jumping whatsoever. A real shame yeah. because next up oh. is the hovering okay. tutorial, which we have no choice but to get past the intended way, adding two more jumps to our total. Alright, uh, yeah. But after that, we run into Spark. Oh, come on. But you could just say it's useless and not have these long, like, things that take all this editing and designing the whole thing and finding an image, you know? It's also completely worthless to our cause. Also, wait, isn't this the exact same description? Moves, none, pros, shiny, question mark, cons, it's useless. But after that, we come across fire. All right. Little side tangent here. Doesn't it sound like that song is it's, uh, the word rabbit? I don't know why it does, but it really sounds like that if you listen to it. Unfortunately, we learned back in the Amazing Mirror that fire is of no use to us in these older Kirby games. That's because Burn, the move that is actually of use to us in the later Kirby games with fire, actually is its own copy ability in the earlier Kirby games, Burning. Or so I thought. But as it turns out, Squeak Squad actually is the game that saw burning subsumed into fire. Th oh, see? That means with a simple dash and attack, we can use the move burn, which shoots Kirby straight forward as a fireball. Yes. 
This is obviously great for crossing large gaps, but can also Finally, get these attacks such as proper yes. timing. You could do a burn again after running into a wall or the edge of the screen after your previous burn. You do, however, need an entirely flat surface to utilize such an approach. Luckily, a flat surface is exactly what we have on this next screen in the form of its edge. Getting the timing right is quite a pain, though. It's a relatively easy window to miss, and if you do, then you just breathe some fire pathetically as you fall back down to earth, nah. losing all of your progress. Breathe some fire pathetically. I like that joke. It is possible to scale the screen, though. Just really annoying, and honestly, kind of hurts your fingers to do so. Then the next screen presents us with this long pool of water to cross. Falling in here is a death sentence, as you can't use burn from the very slight escape from the surface of water you can obtain by slightly tapping up on the d-pad. So if we fall into this drink, we're stuck. Now burn is in theory good for crossing wide gaps, the only issue is that this one is ever so slightly too wide. Theoretically, I think it's probably possible to get another burn in, you know, maybe, but I don't know if Simicraft will be able to do it. Maybe this is another jump, I don't know. To get across in a single burn. And while you can activate another burn in midair after your previous one has run out, that requires a bit of time we don't have, lest we dive into the water below. Or so it would seem. But actually, with perfect timing, you can activate a burn just before touching the water's surface. We can then activate another burn after crashing into the opposite bank, thus getting us across. Yes! So, in the struggle- I, I, I knew that was possible, but I was actually unable to do it. So honestly, when I saw this part, I was reminded of it. I was, I was like, oh crap, did I put something false and not true inside my video without noticing? Oh no. Struggle of fire versus water? This time, fire prevails. Take that! Pokemon. And finally, the stage ends with another cliff to scale, which is perfectly flat and therefore the perfect mark for fire. And thus ends stage one. All right. Hopefully, things get a bit simpler from here on out. <laughs> stage two. Yeah, considering that stage one was literally half of the entire video. Introduces us to this game's bubble mechanic, which allows you to bring food and copy abilities with you for later use when mm -hmm. you find them inside of these bubbles. You can carry up to five with you, and can even mix them for new random abilities or better food. Definitely the sort of thing that should prove very useful, I'd imagine. Anyway, the rest of Stage 2 presents us with the same sorts of obstacles Stage 1 did, all of which Fire can clear. But then Stage- This obstacle without mixing, like with bubbles, is impossible with Fire. Yeah, it's impossible with Three Fire. 3 presents us with knowledge. Fire's Kryptonite. Overhangs. When the pandemic hit, businesses anticipated that the COVID risk. Okay. <laughs> Skip the ad. Yep, there is no way, as far as I can tell, to get the whole way up and out of this shaft using fire. And unfortunately, fire is the only comparability with a decent jump replacement we've encountered thus far. <laughs> but remember, we do have the means by which to do a comparability mix at any time, thanks to the bubbles. Right. So, you could just get another ability. So it's like, if you ban mixing, five jumps, but... It, or no, if you allow mixing, it's five jumps, but if you ban it, it's six, because you would have to jump in this room. So let's try it out and see what we get. Tornado! Huh. Tornado has been an incredibly useful comparability in just about every game in which we've had access to it. And Squeak Squad is no exception. By turning into a tornado, Kirby effectively gains the ability to fly. Now that flight is a bit unwieldy to control since you have to constantly be moving diagonal in some fashion while you're in the air, but I'll tell you what, it certainly beats what we had going with fire. And it definitely gets us past these overhangs. Yeah. I don't know why, man, but while playing, it feels like Tornado is just such an overly common ability. And the rest of the stage. And, uh, well, quite a few others. Oh, treasure chest. Dee dee dee. Die dee dee dee. Go down here. Did 
just goes right now the switch at level two stage five almost seemed unmakeable with tornado due to all the wasted movements you get when you use it but if you get the angles just right you can just barely make it in time <laughs> One thing is that the one EX level actually has Tornado, Fighter, and a High Jump, which are like the three most useful abilities in the whole run. So, see me craft, just kind of decided not to play it. I played it though. Wait, so are we just gonna montage you the whole Huh? These lava falls of level 5 stage 4 were a bit of a hassle. You're invulnerable as a tornado, so you actually can't just bounce off of them. What you do need to be cautious of is if your tornado runs out while you are colliding with one of them, then you do get hit and most likely lose your copy ability. Uh. You just need to be a bit cautious and stay near the middle when you oh. feel your tornado is about to run out. The level 5 boss is easily the most difficult one thus far. It was a bit of a chip job as I was only able to get about one or two hits in with each tornado due to the boss's inconvenient positioning and frequent motion. To be fair, that's better than almost any other ability because you'd only be able to get one hit in per attack. Certainly winnable though. Even with jumps. Yeah, that's kind of how this game plays out is that there's going to be like only one interesting section in like after a ton of levels and that's why I didn't follow through with it and make part two. More ads. Trello is teamwork at scale and it keeps company data safe. Trello for enterprise. Darlene knows donuts. Not design, swear, I'm just gonna but with the new design tool from FedEx Office. I'm just gonna Office, roast all of them. Those donuts probably are made with. Unfortunately, the after pink finishing level six, I McDonald's discovered that I was lacking nuggets. three of the star seals required to advance further. So I went back to the levels where they were and actually got the large chest they were in. They were actually all quite easy to get. I just ignored them before, like a complete fool. Now on to level seven, and its annoying water level opening. One thing is that when I watch this video, it feels like, um, it feels like Simi Craft, like, just first played this game for this video. I don't know. Not like a, that there's anything wrong with that. It's just a thing. It's not super difficult. It's just annoying because any hit you take in the underwater sections causes you to lose your cop ability and generally in an irrecoverable fashion. All right, now back to tornado domination. He still hasn't even mentioned high jump or fighter. All right, so I think he's in World Seven. Or world Seven. Or is this World Eight right now? This footage, I can't tell. Oh yeah, this is all in World Seven. Yes, this is World 7 boss, Metakai. Oh, this part, that part is kinda noteworthy. We should have talked about it a bit more. You get more ad revenue. He's already gotten three ad reads in just this one of eight. Level 8 Stage 3 had this door in it, which was very annoying to get through. Since you effectively have to get your tornado to end just above it to be able to get through it. Well, I have a no dumb idea. What if you could um, RNG manipulate the YouTube website to always get skippable ads? I don't know. I've watched too many videos about stupid tricks and speedrunning. Penalty for failure. So with a bit of trial and error, it can't be done. <laughs> then the boss fight with Deroach is pretty easy. It does, however, upon victory, place you in a platforming area with the copy ability Triple Star equipped, which doesn't possess any jump replacements. Ah. Uh. Luckily, we can still use Bubbles here to switch back to our oh-so-precious Tornado, which clears yeah. the platforming with ease. And then finally, the fight with Dark Nebula is no problem. 
So, is it possible to beat Kirby's Squeak Squad without jumping? No. It would seem to me that five jumps are necessary to beat Kirby Squeak Squad. But honestly, that's actually a quite respectable number, at least in my opinion. Overall, this actually probably was one of the easier Kirby No Jump challenges. Oh, and speaking of those, if you like this video, I have several more Kirby No Jump challenge videos on this channel for you to check out, including one on Kirby and the Forgotten Land. And of course, if you did like the- I don't know why he, uh... Thing is, is that with his, um, Forgotten Land video... I don't know why, man. I feel like he's just kind of milking the trend by specifically mentioning that one. Specifically? Specifically? Um... I don't know. Uh, are they both right? Are they wrong? Uh, uh, which one's wrong? I, I have no idea. But, so, for a quick recap, this video does come to the same conclusion as I did. To where it's possible with five jumps. And, yeah, just five jumps. But if you ban mixing, it's possible with six. Because there's one jump you have to mix in order to skip. So, other than that, yeah. Show support with super thin. What does this do? You could thank people, you can donate to people on videos. I, I have no money, I'm poor. I'm too poor for it. Yo, so somebody, somebody just, it's, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Tell me that you can enable super thanks when you have under a thousand subs so that I don't have to get monetized or in money and I can milk my fans' donations and use it to fund my questionable actions. <laughs> Wait, you thought I, that 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 I was actually trying to do that, and I forgot to stop the recording. <laughs> you actually thought that, you idiot. And if you knew that was a joke, um, then this next joke makes no sense. It doesn't apply to you at all. <laughs> Yay! Yay! How far can I get those two dots to go on the recording software? Anyways, bye!